Okay, we move on to 6.7, equal protection under the law. All right, discrimination. Uh, the general meaning of the word discrimination is classification or treating groups differently. All right, some of this is bound to happen. For instance, there has to be age requirements to drive, and there has to be age requirements to drink, maybe. Um, in the 14th Amendment, there is something called the Equal Protection Clause, and that bans state governments from practicing unreasonable discrimination. Okay, so uh, not letting someone drive until they're 16, 17, that's reasonable. Not letting somebody vote because they're black, that's unreasonable. Court tests have been used to determine if state government's discrimination is constitutional. Uh, we have different types of tests here. There's the rational basis test, and that says discrimination is constitutional if it has a reasonable relationship to a proper purpose of government. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but... Here's an example of discrimination that we allow. Uh, we discriminate against polygamy. We discriminate on marriage age or prohibiting felons from being teachers. All right. Um, let's continue. And then there's the strict scrutiny uh, suspect classifications test. All right. Suspect class, a class that has historically suffered unequal treatment on the basis of race or national origin. Uh, when government discriminates on this basis, burden of proof shifts to the defendant or the government. All right. So courts subject such discrimination to strict scrutiny. There must be con compelling purpose. Uh, so basically, when you're going to practice discrimination with a large group, you, the government has to defend itself and explain why they're doing it. Let's look at affirmative action over the years. The big case I think you need to know most is UC Regents v. Bake in 1978, and that says that race can be taken into consideration um, as part of someone's admission into college. In 1989, we had Richmond v. Croson, which banned city set-aside programs. All right. In Gratz v. Bollinger, 2003, it struck down the use of bonus points for race. We learned this uh, the other day. Using bonus points for race is not okay, uh, but you can consider race. It cannot be the overwhelming factor. In Grutter v. Bollinger in 2003, it allowed the use of race as a general factor in law school admissions. Um, <clears throat> oh, it looks like this should be looks like this should be its own bullet point. Let me fix that real quick. Our words got a little smaller. Um, <clears throat> so basically, in the the Bollinger cases. Race could be used, but it couldn't give them a whole bunch of points. It couldn't be this like significant thing that allowed them to get into school. In California, Proposition 209 banned state affirmative action programs, but that was later overturned uh, by actually lawmakers got rid of that. Uh, race cannot be considered when drawing boundaries. Okay, uh, so when you're redistricting in order to, for a congressional representation. Race cannot be a major force in how you set up your districts, okay? Because that could be used to reduce the power of certain groups of people. Then there's the quasi-suspect classifications test. Um, gender is a big part of this, okay? So what's the scrutiny for sex discrimination? Uh, it's not quite as high as race uh, because it does recognize some biological differences between the sexes. State law allows for uh, women to leave because they're pregnant, but not men, and that's probably okay. All right. To justify such discrimination, states must show that the law bears some relation to important governmental objectives. A law cannot be based upon archaic or old notions about women being the fairer sex. All right. So you, you can't necessarily say like, oh, women can't do this job because it, it involves lifting too much weight. They're not. They can't do it. They're too frail. That's not okay. But you can say, uh, women, we're going to give you time off work because you had a baby. Men, we're not. And that's considered okay. Another good example of this is the fact that males can be drafted into the army during times of war. Uh, women do not. All right. Then there's the fundamental rights test. Courts subject laws which deny fundamental rights to strict scrutiny. Fundamental rights are those which are in the Constitution, such as like the First Amendment liberties and voting. Such rights also include those which are implicitly in the Constitution, like travel, political association, privacy. Remember, uh, Griswold v. Connecticut, that's the birth control case. Let's look at abortion court cases. 
prior to 1973, states had their own laws about abortion. California might allow it. Montana might ban it. Okay, but in Roe versus Wade in 1973, it said that uh, your right to privacy as a woman implied in the Bill of Rights says that, yes, you can get an abortion. Um, states could put some restrictions on it, but states had to allow it also. Another case, Webster v. Reproductive Health Services, 1987. It did not overturn Roe, but it gave states more leeway in restricting abortion. They still had to allow it, but they could make it more difficult to happen. Planned Parenthood versus Casey, 1992. Someone defined that lee. Uh, someone defined that leeway we just talked about. That states cannot impose an undue burden on a woman's right to abortion. Here's an example. Um, undue burden. So some states right now. Before you're able to get an abortion, like Nebraska, Oklahoma, I can't remember, one of those middle states, they passed a law that says – Texas, I think, tried to do this too. They passed a law that says if you want to get an abortion, you must have an ultrasound and look at your baby on the ultrasound and he listen to the heartbeat Okay, for like a certain amount of minutes. They need to like look on the screen, listen to the heartbeat, put headphones on. Uh, of course, that would – you know. Be kind of distressing uh, to someone who's going to get an abortion. The idea is maybe it'll get them to change their mind, or at least make them a little uncomfortable. And a lot of people would argue that's an undue burden on a woman's right to abortion. So I think you know you may see the Supreme Court strike those laws down because perhaps some you might interpret that as an undue burden. It depends on what the Supreme Court wants to do. In two in 2003, there was a law passed called the Partial Birth Abortion Act that banned partial birth abortion, which means uh, like in the really late stages of pregnancy, you cannot get an abortion because you know the baby is like pretty much a baby by then. And uh, there was a court case about it, Gonzalez v. Carehart in 2007. And the case said, yes, this is a constitutional ban. It's okay for us to be banning late-term abortions. Uh, totally changing topics here. Voting was a topic in uh, Bush v. Gore in the year 2000 with the use of the 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Clause. Same-sex marriage, this is a major one happening right now all around the country. Um, today, 17 states, and I think plus uh, Washington, D.C., so almost 18 if you kind of count them, allow for same-sex marriage uh, in their states, which is a huge difference than years ago. I had to change this PowerPoint. If you printed out the notes, I think it says three or four or five states allow it. So just in the last 10 years, we've seen – less than 10 years, we've seen a major increase in the amount of states that allow gay, uh, gay marriage. Think of Prop 8 in California. I think – was that the year Obama was elected in 2008? Um, we said no to gay marriage. I imagine if that prop was re-voted on today in California, it would uh, it would be allowed. Gay marriage would be allowed. And actually, we the court decision – uh, well, actually, this is tied in. So the, there was a court case over this Defense of Marriage Act in 1996, and this is actually signed by Bill Clinton, a Democratic president, and he said that marriage is defined as a union between a man and a woman, and that if you're, say, Tennessee, and, so, and a gay couple gets married in – gosh, who allows it? Let's say uh, Hawaii or something. Gay couple gets married in Hawaii, goes back to Tennessee – Tennessee did not have to recognize the marriage of those people. Uh, this is the Defense of Marriage Act. We call it DOMA. All right. In 2013, the DOMA was looked at very carefully um, along with Prop 8 from California by the Supreme Court, and they decided that parts of DOMA were unconstitutional, including that part. So I believe if you are gay and you go to another state and you get married and you come back, at least federally – your marriage will be recognized, like on taxes and stuff. I don't know that. I don't think the states have to recognize it. Uh, in that same case, Prop 8 was taken to the courts, and this is California constitutional amendment that banned gay marriage that we voted on, and the courts struck it down, uh, I believe, as unconstitutional. So you can get married in California as a gay couple, and so yeah, major change is happening to gay marriage right now. Uh, gay rights. Okay, we talked about Lawrence v. Texas. I think we're going to have a, somebody present on it in class soon. This is a court case that struck down a Texas sodomy law. So Texas had a law that said if you commit sodomy, then that's a crime. And uh, sodomy is uh, what gay men practice, I imagine, uh, along with other people too. So uh, 
it was struck down by the courts as part of the 14th Amendment's due process clause that um, that that's part of your implied freedoms in the Bill of Rights. Okay, that's it for notes. Make sure that you answer the questions on Schoology as well. Thanks for your patience. Have a nice day.